And how's it going, guys? Joshua LeFem here, live in LA, and welcome to yet another creative week with Herman Huang, aka Coffee Liquor. Today, we're going to be talking about the Klaus Spirit Split Effect. Creative week is a time when we step in every day with one of my friends that's more creative and more talented than myself and conquer a lot of really cool topics. Coffee Liquor is going to be releasing one video every day this week, diving into the incredible world of VFX. You can actually download the project file that Herman's going to be using so you can follow along in the link below. Try this though. Watch this tutorial all the way through once, just sitting back and relaxing and soaking it in and then download the project file and then watch it a second time and then actually do the tutorial with me while editing with the project file. But first, of course, we're going to be talking about Envato Elements. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning. They also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you can get a 70% discount for your first month. Basically, you're just paying nine bucks. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. Thanks for the introduction, Josh. How's it going, guys? It's Herman here. And today we're gonna learn how to do this spirit split effect that is seen in the popular series, Umbrella Academy. Now, I've seen a lot of tutorials on number five's teleportation effect, which is really dope, but I don't see a lot of love for Ben and Klaus. So I wanted to share a way that you can do it yourself in After Effects. Now, to get into what you actually need to film, there's gonna be two clips. One of them is gonna be you, just regular you, acting out whatever you want and interacting with your spirit. I know it looks pretty silly when I'm just showing you this clip, but the second clip that you wanna film is going to be in front of a green screen as the second character because you're going to want to key yourself out in After Effects. Now, I recommend filming both clips with the same lighting setup. That way, when you composite it together, it feels like it's in the same environment. But uh, yeah, guys, once you film those two clips, let's hop over to your computer and launch After Effects. Why are, why are we back to my head? Oh, okay, so if you wanna follow along, there's actually a project file that you can download in the description below. However, I do recommend that you first watch through the entire video once so you can understand what's happening and know all the steps before you try and do it yourself and follow along. Now's the real transition. Now we can, now we can do the thing. So we are now in After Effects. I've imported the clip that I'm gonna be using, which is me uh, interacting with my spirit. And then combined with this clip is the green screen footage. Now, if you're using your own footage, then you would import your own footage. But in this case, I'm using this clip and I'm going to first create a new comp by hitting this button over here, create a new comp. We're going to change the width and dimension to something that is Instagram's dimension. And we're just gonna call this the main and then we're gonna put this into the tutorial folder because organization is key. We're gonna slap this footage in just like so. And then I'm gonna hit R to bring up the rotation and make it minus 90 so that it's actually upright. And then I'm gonna hit S to bring up the scale. And then we're just gonna reposition it and everything until it looks fine and dandy so you can actually see everything. And then I'm going to also find the point where it will uh, split. However, the clip is actually longer than the composition, so I'm gonna hit Control K to bring up the composition settings. I'm gonna change the duration to something like, I don't know, 20 seconds, at least for now, because I'm not too sure how long this clip is. Okay, so we're gonna find the point where it becomes a green screen footage, and I'm going to splice it here. And how I'm gonna do that is I highlight the clip, highlight the layer, and then I'm gonna hit Control Shift D, and then that will split the clip at this point. Now I'm just gonna rename things so it's easier to follow along. The bottom clip over here, we're gonna call it Normal Me, and then the top one will be Spirit Me. Once you have your clips ready over here, the first step to actually achieving the effect is to first track the body because I want the spirit to be attached to the body. It's gonna be coming out from this area, and how I'm gonna do that is by applying Mocha. But before that, first I want to pre-comp this because if I put this directly into Mocha, it's going to be rotated uh, like what it was earlier and it's going to take the parameters of this footage. So instead I'm going to hit control shift C to pre-comp it. We're going to call this normal me comp and then we're going to move all attributes into the new composition and hit OK. Now we're ready to apply Mocha. Now I'm going to hit a shortcut uh, for a free plugin called Effects Console. The shortcut is control space bar. You can go ahead and download this. It is called Effects Console by Video Copilot. And basically it saves some time from reaching all the way over to the effects panel over here and typing it in when I can just hit a shortcut and then type in the effect that I want, which is in this case, Mocha. So we're going to apply that. And then we're going to hit this big, nice Mocha button to bring up Mocha. So now we're going to track the area that we actually want to track. And I'm only going to start tracking close to where the spirit will be emerging. So somewhere around here, I'm gonna start using this tool over here 
to track my body, kind of like this. And then we're going to track forward with this button over here. And then Mocha will do its magical Mocha thingy and track really accurately, which is why I love going into Mocha. Okay, up until around here is pretty good. I'm gonna hit Control S so it saves the data and then exit Mocha. So we're going to create a null object. How I do that is by right-clicking an empty space, hitting new and then null object. And then we're going to rename this to track because we're going to export the tracking data that we just um, made in Mocha. And then we're gonna apply it to this track layer. So clicking this layer with the tracking data, we're gonna create tracking data. And there's only one layer that we worked with so we can hit okay. And then we're going to change the export option to the transform. We're not taking corner pin, we're taking the transform data. And then the layer export to track layer, this one over here. And then we're gonna hit this big button, apply export. And as you can guess, we have now exported the tracking data over to the layer. If I hit U to bring up the keyframes, you can see all this lovely data tracked to my jacket. Now, when I try the effect, I feel like uh, using the scale and the rotation data made it look a little bit odd. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch for both of these and only use the position data for the tracking. And that should be good enough for what I'm trying to achieve. So starting from here is where I will kind of pin the uh, spirit me. But before I actually pin anything, I want to actually key out this green background. And how I'm gonna do that is by adding key light. I'm gonna type in key light if I, if I actually can. Clearly I'm not very good at typing. And we're gonna hit this one that is longer. It has key light, key cleaner, and advanced spill suppressor. And that's the one that we wanna to use to achieve the best result. Now this tutorial isn't about getting the best key out of a green screen. However, there are tutorials online. There's actually one that Josh talks about on his channel. So you can check that out as well in terms of keying a green screen. But the basic way of doing so is by first selecting the green color. We find something that is pretty evenly green, which is somewhere around here. I'm going to actually hit the solo button over here so I can just see this layer without anything underneath. And then I'm going to play with the screen gain until it's something that I'm happy with. So somewhere around here is not bad. I can always change the view option to something like screen matte. So I can see that the black is what's transparent and the white is what's being kept. And then I'm just gonna play with the parameters until I get a nice key. Okay, so once I have a nice key, I'm going to actually get rid of any of this background that I don't wanna see by just drawing a mask by using the pen tool. So I'm just going to draw away all the stuff that is unnecessary. And just like that, we have me in front of a transparent background. Now, right now it's black, but if I toggle the transparency grid, you can see that the background is completely transparent. And just to keep things organized, I'm going to pre-comp this. I'm going to actually just bring it all the way to the beginning over here. And I'm gonna hit Control Shift C like I did before to pre-comp stuff. And we're gonna call this Spirit Me. Uh, keyed. We are pretty much ready to start pinning it. Now I'm going to unsolo this so that I can see what's happening underneath. And then I'm going to, starting from around here, I want myself to kind of emerge. And I'm just going to set the resolution to half so it's a little bit faster to preview. And then I'm going to roughly match the size and the position. So something around here is not bad. And then now to get this to stick to my other body, I'm going to parent this by hitting this pick whip. I'm going to hold on to it and I'm going to drag it over to the track layer. And then now if I scrub through it, you can see that it is pinned to my body. Now this is looking a little bit odd, but I'm going to just play with the position and the rotation until it's something that I'm happy with. Now, another thing to watch out for, for this example specifically, uh, I'm not gonna get into it, but basically what I did was I sped up the timing of this keyed footage so that I would time it to this apple being thrown and then me catching it. So what I did was I retimed the footage by splitting the clip into areas that I actually want to speed up. So you can adjust the time by, for example, right clicking and then hitting time and then using the enable time remap, or you can do time stretch and then just speed up the specific portion that you wanna make a little bit faster, but make sure that you're timing the interaction that makes sense. In this case, I'm using a plugin called Twixter just to retime everything, but I'm not gonna get into that too much. Just make sure that you are timing the action of your real self interacting with your spirit self. So now when I go back to this main comp, the timing should work out pretty well. I'm just going to make sure that the position and everything works out as well. So when I play it through, this is what it looks like so far. I jump out and then it times the apple. So that comes out and then by the time I look over, I'm already gone. Now before we continue, if you're liking the video so far, please check out my Instagram page at Coffee Liquor and you can see what I've been working on. Shoot me a DM if you wanna chat or if you got any questions as well cause I'd be more than happy to reply back. All right, let's continue. 
Now we want to cut up the portion that we don't want to kind of show, which is around here. And instead of applying the mask directly on the layer, I'm going to create a new mat. How I'm going to do that is by hitting Control Y to make a new solid. We're going to call it mat, and then we're going to parent it to the track layer like this so that it will match the movement as well. And then I'm going to hide the visibility for that and I'm going to draw a mask on this mat. So while it's still highlighted, even though it is uh, hidden in terms of visibility, I can draw a mask in the general area. So we're gonna say something like this, just like a really rough. Now we're gonna click the spirit me over here and we're gonna change the track mat to Luma inverted mat. And basically whatever's white right now in the solid, it's going to be cut out like so. Now this is a pretty sharp line over here. So we're gonna soften that up by hitting F while we highlight the matte layer. And then we're just gonna change the feather kind of like this. And then we're gonna make some adjustments to make sure it makes sense. So kind of like that is okay. It doesn't need to be entirely perfect because we're going to be decorating it with a bunch of other things as well. Now, if it does something kind of weird like this, I recommend just scaling it up a little bit so that it adjusts for that little wiggle room. And then if there are weird things happening like over here, then I can always animate the mask or I can just move the mask kind of like this. And one little detail that is optional actually is by adding a bit of a distortion. And that's because when I emerge out, I kind of want it to look like I'm squeezing out of myself. Uh, that sounded kind of weird, but let's go with it. How I'm gonna do that is by highlighting this spirit me keyed. I'm going to bring up an effect called Bezier Warp. And then I'm gonna find that final position where I want it to be normal, which is kind of over here. And I'm just gonna go crazy. I'm just gonna hit the stopwatch for all these parameters, except for quality. And then we're gonna go to the beginning over here and I'm gonna start kind of warping myself. I'm gonna highlight the effect and then I'm gonna start kind of squeezing myself like this. So I look a little bit distorted. And then when I play it through, it's really subtle, but you can go as crazy as you like. And I'm also going to trim the area that I don't want myself to appear yet. So starting around here, it's pretty good. And then I can always do the same thing when I go back in, kind of like that. So that's looking pretty neat so far. And then now we kind of have to hide this seam with some effects. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a new solid by hitting Control Y, hit OK. And then we're going to change the scale so it's a little bit bigger. And then we're also, just like the mat that we did before, we're going to pick whip it and then parent it over to the track layer. So it must listen to its parent and follow the position. Now to decorate everything, we are going to rename this first calling it Saber because that is the plugin that we are going to be using. It is a free plugin also by Video Copilot. As you can tell, they make a lot of amazing plugins and they are completely free. So we're gonna pull up the effect called Saber, which I recommend that you download if you would like this effect. And we're gonna change the preset over here to anything that you think will look good. But in this case, I'm gonna use Nebula. I think that's pretty good. And then we're gonna change the color to something like blue like that. Now, personally, what I like to do is I'm going to hide the visibility first and I'm going to take the pen tool and I'm going to draw the area that I actually want the line to appear. So something like this. And then I'm going to turn the visibility back on for Saber. And then I'm going to change the customized core and the core type to layer mask. And basically it's going to take the mask and then follow the line that I just drew over here. So this gives me a little more flexibility if I decide to kind of move things around. We're gonna change the blending mode down here to screen so that we can see through it. And already over here, this is looking pretty neat. So at this point, it's really up to your taste what you would like to adjust. In this case, I'm just gonna make it glow even bigger. Okay, maybe the glow intensity doesn't need to be too crazy, but I can basically set everything so that it looks good. Now I'm gonna animate this line so that it doesn't just appear as this long line. I want it to kind of be a little bit smaller and then grow into this size. So I'm gonna animate it by hitting M to bring up the mask. We're gonna hit the stopwatch so we can keyframe this. And then we're just going to move this mask until it looks pretty good. Okay, so once we've animated it, this is what it looks like, which is looking pretty good so far. But at this point, what I like to do is kind of layer the effect. So I'm going to duplicate it and then I'm gonna change the opacity to something less. And then I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger. So I'm basically almost like creating some more atmosphere over here. I'm gonna change the opacity for the other ones as well. So it's not too sharp. And when I play it through, congratulations guys, you are essentially done. That is how you do the effect. Now, if I open up my other comp where I spent a little more time with it, the only real difference here is that I have three saber, oh, four saber layers. Wow, I went kind of crazy over here. And uh, some optional things that I did was also add this kind of smoke slash energy cloud thing in the background over here, which I have 
like this and even added a bit of a light wrap but this is not what the tutorial is about these are all optional things to make it look even better and i have this other magic smoke loop uh, that I have on top. And these motion graphics can easily be found in Envato Elements. So I encourage you to check out their library and apply it to your own effects because adding these details is the difference between it looking okay to it looking a lot more polished. And that's how you do the spirit split effect yourself in After Effects. Some of you might be thinking, when am I ever gonna wanna pull out someone else's spirit out of my body unless I'm writing like a film or a TV show about it? You don't have to. You can always do something very similar to what I did in which you pull out an alter ego that makes you want to suffer by not letting you enjoy the things that you like. Or you could simply just duplicate yourself and set that as a premise for a music video or a commercial. Whatever it is that you decide to do, we're excited to see where you guys can take it. Now, as usual, stay tuned to the next tutorial. Check out some of my other tutorials that I've put out on his channel as well, if you like this one. And check out my Instagram at Coffee Liquor so you can see what I've been up to. So until the next tutorial, guys, let's bring it back over to Josh. Herman, thank you so much for yet another incredible VFX tutorial. Please make sure to watch all the other incredible tutorials that we have in this month's Creative Week with Herman Huang. I got two more videos for you to check out right here. Remember, you can get a first month of Envato Elements for only $9 in the link below. We've stopped doing the free month offer. That's been an offer that's been going on for about six months. It finally came to an end, but you can still get the first month for $9. Every subscription really helps the channel. So please make sure to check it out. Thanks so much for watching guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.